Hello again, my friends. If you are here for the very first time and you don't already know, I'm Islam Shaban with BC based BLC programming using Twinkat 3 tutorial. This is exactly where you want to be to learn more about Twinkat 3 and how to program a big of BC based BLC. In the previous episode, we already learned the philosophy behind Twinkat 3 and how it works. Also, how to create WinCAD XAE project and PLC project. We also learned how to do the real time and tasks configuration. So now is the time to dive deeper into the PLC programming by learning more about the structured text programming language. As you already know, the structured text is one of the textual programming languages in the IEC 61131 standard. And the first step to understand any programming language is to know how to declare a variable and how to define its data type and which data type are supported by this programming language. In the previous video, I declared a variable which increments each cycle. But what exactly is meant by a variable? Variable is a storage or container to save information or data in the memory. The variable name, or let's say the variable identifier, is a label for this piece of data in the memory. So you can use this label to read the data from the memory by reading the variable value and you can store data to the memory by assigning data or value to the variable. This data could be the value of an input signal to the PLC from a sensor like a temperature transmitter or could be an internal data as a result of a calculations or even an output from the PLC towards the actuators like a motor speed for instance. To declare a variable, first you have to give it a name. Naming a variables is known as one of the most difficult tasks in computer programming. When you are naming a variable, think hard about the name. Try your best to make sure that the name you assign your variable is accurately descriptive and understandable. After selecting a good name, you have to specify the variable data type. You assign a data type to each variable identifier. The data type determines how much memory space is allocated and how this value are interpreted. Twinkat 3 supports all the data types described in the IEC 61131 standard in the third edition. So I'm gonna show you the most used data types. So grab your drink and let's start. Let's start with the most famous one, Boolean. The Boolean data type is a data type that has one of two possible values, true and false, which is intended to represent the two true values of logic and Boolean algebra. Also, you can use a Boolean data type to represent the on-off signals from the sensors or towards the actuators. It uses one byte of the PLC memory. People sometimes get confused about the memory size of the Boolean data type as they think it takes one bit from the PLC memory. However, its memory size is eight bits or one byte. To declare a variable, give it a name followed by a colon and the data type. And do not forget the semicolon at the end of the line. And to assign a value to the variable, you have to use the character colon followed by the equal sign. And also do not forget the semicolon at the end of the line. Next, the basic data type, the integer data type, we can use a wide range of the integer data type. It's varied in the memory size plus the value range. Notice the differences in the value range and the relation between this range and the size of the used memory. 
the bigger the memory size, the bigger the value range. For example, comparing the short integer and the integer data type. The short integer has 8 bits memory size, which is mean 1 byte. Thus, its value range from 127 to minus 128. On the other hand, the integer value range is from 32,767 to minus 32,768 as its memory size is 16 bit, 2 bytes. But also comparing integer and the unsigned integer, however, both data type has the same memory size, but the value range is different. And that's because the integer data type is a signed data type, which is mean one bit of the 16-bit memory space reserved to hold the sign value, positive or negative. On the other hand, the unsigned integer, obviously from its name, unsigned, so it uses the whole 16 bit for storing data. You can notice the same differences between the other data types as well. For instance, the long integer and the unsigned long integer. We can use also the data type byte word, double word, and long word. There is no big difference between those data type and the integer data type family. For example, byte is almost identical to the unsigned short integer. Usually, I use the byte slash word family only if I'm gonna use the variable in any other form except the decimal form. For example, the binary base or hexadecimal base form. And I keep the decimal form to the integer family. There is no written rule for this, but it's the legacy of using the old traditional BLC. It's possible to define the base of the variable by writing down the base number followed by a hashtag, and then the value in that base format, as shown in the example. If you don't explicitly declare the base, the default base is 10, which is mean a decimal number. The next data type is the real and long real data type. They are necessary when using a floating point number. Next, the data type that represents time, starting by the data type time. You can use data type time to handle the standard timer modules in addition to the time constant, where you can specify the time in millisecond resolution. You can use the time declaration in these time units. D for days, H for hours, M for minutes, S for seconds, and MS for milliseconds. It is not necessary to use all the units, but it must be arranged in the correct order. When setting a value to a time variable, you have to write T or time followed by a hashtag, then the value of the variable, as shown in the example. Also, make sure you have the correct usage of the time data type and avoid these common mistakes. Internally, Twincat treats the time data type like double word, so the maximum value of the time data type is this amount of milliseconds, which is equivalent approximately to 49.7 days. The second data type is long time. It's the same of time data type, but with more resolution reaches to nanoseconds and of course use more memory space it uses 64 bit the time declaration can contain the time units that apply to the time data type and in addition microseconds and nanoseconds when setting a value to a time variable you have to write L time followed by a hashtag, then the value of the variable as shown in the example. The upper bound of the long time data type 
reaches a tremendous amount of time. 200,000 days? Are you kidding me? In some applications, it is more convenient to represent time with the PLC program as we represent it in our daily activities as humans by using the data type date, time of day, or date and time of day data type. The date data type, as the name implies, you can use the date data type to specify dates. When setting a value to a date variable, you have to write D or date followed by hashtag, then the value of that variable as shown in the example. The date declaration has to be specified in the format year, month, and day. Internally, Twincat treats date values like double word. The time is specified in seconds from the 1st of January, 1970. Time of day data type. You can use the data type time of day to specify times in 24 hour format. When setting a value to a time of day variable, you have to write TOD or time of day followed by the hashtag and then of course the value of the variable. The time declaration has to be specified in the format hour, minute, second. You can specify seconds as a real numbers. Optionally, with seconds fraction. Date and time data type is a combination of date and time of day data types. So if we combine the date data type and time of the day data type together, then we will get date and time. When setting a value to a date and time variable, you have to write DT or date and time followed by a hashtag, then the value of the variable. The date and time declaration has to be specified in the following format, year, month, day, hour, minute, second. Okay then, let's have an actual example of how to declare a variable within Twincat 3 and assign a value to the variable. To declare a variable, you have to declare it in the declaration area between the two keywords var and end var. After choosing a good name for instant, int var, followed by a colon, and the data type, for example, integer, do not forget the semicolon at the end of the line. To assign a value to the variable, you have to use the character colon, followed by the equal sign, and then the required value. Do not forget also the semicolon. Always it's useful to add a comment to your code. The common part doesn't include it in the compiling process, so you just consider it as a piece of text to give more information about your code and make it more readable, either by using the double slash to comment one line. For instance, here all the green color text is a comment. Another way to write a comment is by using parentheses followed by an asterisk. All the text between the parentheses and the asterisk is a comment. You can notice its color turn it to a green. Actually, Twinkle 3 has some tools that make writing a code much easier, like auto declaration and input assistant. You can use the auto declaration tool by right click on the code editor, select auto declare, in this pop-up window, give a name to the variable, for instance, boolean variable, select its data type, boolean, select in which scope this variable should be declared. We will talk in detail about the differences between these scopes in the upcoming episodes. You can also give the variable an initial value, if you wish. By assigning an initial value, to a variable in the first call of the variable, it will carry out the initial value instead of using the Twinkat 3 default value. The default value is zero for the integer variables or false for the Boolean variables. And here you can add the comment part as well. Then your variable is declared.
So this is for the declaration part. But what if you already declared a variable, then you start using it in different places within your code, maybe multiple times. So the input assistant could be a nice tool to help you. Right click and select input assistant or you can just hit F2. From here you can navigate not only to the variables you want to use, but also the blocks of your code or the instant calls. The input assistant can also help you in the language syntax as you can navigate all the keywords from the keywords tab. It helps in the data conversion as well. You can find all the data conversion instructions Also, you can use the search tab to search for a specific object. When you type one or more character into the search box, for instance, the results window lists the name of all objects whose name contains this search string. Double click the desired object to insert it in the editor at the current cursor position. But personally, I find the smart coding feature is the most helpful tool which is I can use while writing my code. You can activate the smart coding from the tool tab, select options, select Twincat, BLC environment, smart coding, and make sure that the second and the fourth option are checked. So the small pop-up window of the input assistant is always there to help me when writing my code. I can choose the variable or the block that I want to access.